views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Wake up, step up, power up with a shot of Joe. This hit show provides the information, inspiration, and tools people need to make positive changes in all areas of life. Join Joe the second and fourth Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern for 30 minutes of higher energy, no nonsense, and powerful tools to make powerful changes. So wake up, step up, and power up. You are listening to A Shot of Joe now. Hey, everybody. How are you? This is Joe Nunziata. I want to welcome you to A Shot of Joe. Always great to have you with me here on Transformation Talk Radio as we continue our journey to higher energy and new vibration. So before, you know, what I always like to do on the show, before we get into today's topic, which we're going to talk about stepping into power, I'd like to talk a little bit about what's happening in the world, what's happening with energy, what's going on with all the different changes and things that are taking place. So right now, we're in an interesting time because we, you know, we went through the beginning of this year in very new energy, very strong energy. A lot of people who are sensitive were really feeling it, really feeling a lot of emotion, dealing with a lot of issues. Also, one of the things we we definitely saw were a lot of endings. So a lot of things coming to an end where it could have been relationships, could have been jobs, could be where you lived, things that were just kind of, you know, part of your life for a period of time. And then all of a sudden they just no longer either didn't work out or didn't fit your life or the direction that you were going in. So as we continue to move forward and we get to the end of March this month, we really get to the end of a, of a cycle. So what happened was on the 20th of this month, we had the spring equinox, which was of course, even though we always have it, obviously it's spring and it's equinox and it's the beginning of spring, but it was also kind of the ending of all this heavy energy that came in for the beginning of this year in January, February, and March. So as we get through this week on the 31st, which is going to be on Saturday, we have a full moon, which will end in effect this cycle and flip us to April 1st into this new energy. We're also in a retrograde, a mercury retrograde, which slows energy down a little bit. So that will continue until April 15th. But now as we kind of come to the end of this month, end of this quarter, end of all this new energy and these cycles that are coming in here. It's going to be time for us to renew and also really understand that we have to let go of whatever it is that's not serving us anymore. Anything that's not positive or something maybe that's been, you've been dealing with for a long period of time that you continue to try to push forward that's not working for you. You know, whatever it is that's going on in your life that has been, maybe it's been your whole life. Maybe it's been people that have been in your whole life or certain issues or beliefs or feelings that you've been carrying. It is really time right now to let it go and move forward. And that'll take us into what I want to talk about today, which is stepping into power, stepping into your power. And this is exactly the perfect time to do it as we end all of these old cycles of energy we are moving into a new higher vibration with new timelines. If you listen to the show at the beginning of this month, my show at the beginning of March, two weeks ago, I talked about the new timelines, the new energy coming in, and now it's here. And we're going to be, like I said, the end of this week, these old timelines are dissolving away. We're moving into different energy, and now it's up to us to step across the line into power. So the first question I ask people when I talk about this topic and I'll say to people, what, is it, what does that mean to you? What does power mean to you? What does it mean for you to be have power? Now, this is an important thing to think about because you have to understand that on some level, unconsciously, you have a lot of ideas, thoughts, feelings, judgments about power based on how you grew up and how power was positioned to you. So that's why it's important for you before you get to this point where you say, yeah, I want to be empowered. Everybody says that, right? I want to be empowered. I want to step into power. I want to 
to, to live a life where I feel, you know, feel like I'm, you know, in command of my life and what's going on, all those different things that you think about. What you have to really understand is at a deeper level, on an unconscious level, on an emotional level, what's really happening is you've got a lot of issues with power and a lot of attachments to power and a lot of ideas about power. So you have to be able to sort this out first. And when I do, like I said, I do this all the time and I always ask people this question and I get answers like, well, what does it mean to you? And people say, well, to me, it means I have more responsibility. I have to deal with more stuff. You know, other people feel like it means that more people will be looking to them or other people don't like the idea. They say, you know, I always thought of powerful people as negative. I had, they had judgment on people who were powerful or they, or they perceived to be powerful. The thing that's really interesting about it is most people, when I talk to them about this, they always talk to me about the outside world. So they'll say things like, well, if I have more power, I have more responsibility. I have more stuff. Maybe I have more money that I have to manage or I have people coming to me for help. Whatever their perception is of what power really is, people always go outside themselves. So what I want you to do is get away from that idea of going outside of yourself. And I want you to understand that power is something that is within yourself. It has, it has nothing to do with your job or your position in society or how much money you have. It has nothing to do with any of those things. Power is an inner feeling that you have. The other thing that's important that people think about when we think about power is people right away will look at it and attach it to ego. Oh, the people who have power, they have big egos. These are people who think who they are. They have this big, gigantic ego that I don't want to have that. I don't want to, and I hear this all the time from people. I don't want to be like that. And again, it's I'm creating a judgment around what I think power is. And as I create that judgment, I stop myself from stepping across into that space. These are all the things you have to sort out because being is an internal feeling that you have about yourself, which really brings us to a place of really self-love. That's what power really is. It's that inner feeling of peace and self-love. You know, one of the things I love to, to when I work with business people and I always say, well, you have this company or you're running this business and you, you're, you're doing all these different things and people are reporting to you and coming to you, but you're not peaceful. So therefore, even though you have the perception of power in the physical world, because you have people coming to you and deferring to you and you're making a certain amount of money and you have a certain car and so forth, you don't have the peacefulness. So what good is it to have power under these conditions when you are not in a peaceful state? So your power is in your peacefulness. So ask yourself, will I feel peaceful if I have power and what does this represent in my life? What does this look like for me as far as how do I see it going forward? How do I see power in my own life? How do I see myself taking on this internal energy and becoming more of a beacon for other people? And I don't mean that as far as you have to be responsible for everybody, but in higher energy, you vibrate different energy when you're in power. So this is an important part of the sorting out process before you get to the point where you can really step into this power that we're talking about is you have to define it and understand it in a way that is clear and more pure versus all of the attachments you have to it. Now you have to understand a lot of this also comes from your childhood because you saw powerful people portrayed maybe in a certain way. It might've been in television. It might've been in movies. It might've been just the way your parents talked about it. Maybe they, they talked negatively about people who were in power, their bosses or people they work for or family members. So you absorbed all this, you absorbed all this information. You absorbed all this energy as a result of absorbing all this information and energy. You now have created this idea of what it means to be powerful and for, for many people, they're avoiding it. They're avoiding it because they see it as, I don't want to take this on. I don't want, I don't want to take all this on. I don't want to be do. I don't want to be grabbing onto all this stuff. I'm trying to let go 
I'm trying to make my life easier. I don't want to be powerful to have to take on more. But the bottom line is when you are truly powerful from within, life becomes easier. It does become easier. But the question is, do you see it that way as you are living your life? So stepping across the line. Now, the other thing about it that's important as we talk about stepping across the line to power is that we understand that when I step across into this feeling of power, but I want you to think of it as self-love, right? I have power and I have self-love. As I'm moving across into that space, what ends up happening is I am shooting out a different vibration of energy out to the world. And what that means is that begins to ruffle feathers of people you've known for a long time because people have known you for a long period of time as a certain type of person. And then all of a sudden you're shifting into a different place. See, so now it's like, wait a minute, what happened? This person became powerful. This person moved to a different energy. But you gotta remember, you didn't make an announcement. You, know, you don't wake up in the morning and say, okay, now, hey, everybody, by the way, it is my time to be powerful now. I'm going to be powerful now. You didn't do that. That's not what happened. You just internally make the shift to more power. And as you do it, you shift the way people see you and perceive you. Now understand something. Excuse me. See, when I talk about power, I get a tickle in my throat. <coughs> Excuse me. See, this is what happens to me when I get into this space. But when you start to cross the line into, into that powerful space, you have to be very aware of the shift around you. So look at how people act and react. Now, your power could just be – you've made this internal shift – and you are loving yourself more, feeling better about yourself, vibrating this calmer energy. So here's what happens. When you get into power, you're calm. People who are truly powerful, when I see people who really are powerful, they are calm. And they have that peaceful power that I'm talking about. And they're vibrating it out. Now, people around you who don't know how to deal with that may see you as being aloof or you, you don't care about anybody anymore or you're not as, as excited, whatever, whatever judgments people want to place on you. So these are all different things that you want to be aware of is that you're going to see different reactions from people as you step into power. And very important, this will really disrupt a lot of family dynamics because all of a sudden you start to shift the dynamic of your family because you start to move into a different position and it does create other issues, could potential rifts, potential problems. So I'm going to talk about this after the break, but we're going to talk about what it feels like to others as you step into power, because they're picking up the vibration, even if they're not aware of it, even if they don't know anything about it, even if they don't do any kind of spiritual or energy work, they feel that vibration. So this is Joe Nunziata. You're listening to A Shot of Joe on Transformation Talk Radio. I'll be back in a minute, and we'll talk about family how to hold your space and continue to move forward. What is a brilliant culture and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. 
Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving. Even in the face of adversity, say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. Welcome back to A Shot of Joe. This is Joe Nunziata here on Transformation Talk Radio. So thank you so much for being with me here today. And, you know, before we took our break, we were talking about power and stepping into power and what that feels like for you and what that means to you. And I was talking about how when you send out that new energy and that new vibration, what ends up happening is you start sending out different energy to people. They start reacting and responding to you in a different way. A lot of people who are threatened by you or just by anybody who is changing or becoming more powerful, that those people will really be affected by this. You'll see this a lot with family because you're changing a family dynamic in many cases because you are now kind of changing the game. And, you know, this is a very interesting part of life. This could be, a, this could happen to you in work, could happen to you in your romantic relationship with your family, with your kids, with your friends, because when you start to shift your energy, what ends up happening is you begin to vibrate in this different energy and you're actually sending a different message. So being powerful means I am protecting myself. I am not going to receive certain things the way I did before. So maybe you were the type of person who was always doing everybody favors and you're always helping everybody and you're always being Mr. Nice guy, as we like to say, right? That all of a sudden, not that you're not being nice anymore, but you're realizing I need to create boundaries. I need to love myself. See, because now as you're loving yourself more, what ends up happening is you begin to create a different field around yourself. It's almost like say, well, I'm not going to be the person who overextends myself. I'm not going to be the person who is always at everyone's beck and call. I don't want to be, you know, always you know, responsible for everybody. See, so you start to shift the dynamic of energy and you'll start to notice how people are affected by that. Now, some people will be happy for you. People who are in different energy, people who are in higher energy, people who love you, they're going to be happy for you. A lot of people, they're threatened. They're afraid. They don't like the fact that you've changed it. So even it could be your family and they say, they don't like the fact that you're changing because they don't understand it. So it's not that they want to necessarily be negative or, or want to, you know, put some hate on you, but they have a problem because they just don't know what to do with this situation. But for you, you, you will have to make some decisions as you evolve and become more powerful. You will have to make some decisions and those decisions will revolve around, okay, I have to now decide who's going to be in my circle. Who am I going to allow to be in my circle of friends? Who's going to be in my circle regarding family? Who are the people I'm going to see on a regular basis? Who are the people I'm going to avoid on a regular basis? Because not that I'm judging them, but they're disrupting my energy and they're disrupting who I am and where the direction I want to go in with my life. Now, one of the other things I do want to address here before we go off the air today is really talking about how people get power and how they pull energy to get it. So you, you have to remember that everybody grew up in their own dysfunctional world and learned how to get power based on what worked for them and what they saw their parents do. So for example, I have people I'll work with and they'll say, well, you know, my mother was always yelling. So if a person's always yelling or angry, then that person learned that I could, I get power or I get respect or I can get people to listen to me when I'm yelling and screaming. Other people get power from having a tantrum, you know, other, and I see this a lot because I do a lot of work in the, in the corporate world and I deal with business owners, salespeople, sales directors, and so forth. And 
the people who are in this mentality of, well, the only way I can get these people to work is I have to yell at them and I have to be on them and I have to micromanage them and I have to beat them up. These are the people that are going to have a problem because that is false power. Because the idea is if I have to beat somebody up figuratively, sometimes literally I've seen that too, but if I have to beat somebody up to do their job, how does that make me powerful? If the only way I can get somebody to do that, it's kind of like what happened in, in the times of slaves and in the times of, you know, these, these, when we had landowners who owned a lot of land and property and they got the slaves to do a lot of things. And, and actually in certain cases, the slaves actually would fight in the army for these people because basically if they didn't, they would have been removed from these lands and they would have had no place to live and they would have had no food. So these are not people that were motivated to, they were just doing it because if they didn't do whatever this master told them to do, they were going to be, in, in their opinion, they were afraid of saying, hey, I'm going to have no way to live. My family, I can't eat. I, what, what, I, what will I do? I have to go fight in this battle that my landowner wants me to fight it. So this is kind of that same mentality of saying, I get power by using what I have to force other people into what I want them to do. This doesn't, this also happens a lot in families. So you may have somebody in your family who kind of hold, holds the reins, as we like to say, and wants to dictate and determine everything that everybody's doing. And that's how they get their power by pulling the strings. It's like the puppet master, right? They were, okay, I'm gonna, I'm the one who dictates everything that happens in this family. So what happens is when someone starts to become more powerful and they realize this is not working for me and they start to withdraw from that situation or it could create conflict because the person who is in this powerful position and has been in this powerful position for a long time. And again, this is not really power. It's more intimidation and fear. It's negatively based, but nonetheless, they had a feeling of power. That person doesn't want to give that up. And you have to understand that everybody learned to get power in different ways. Some people believe it's through material possession. Some people believe it's through social status. It, it really it depends on how you grew up and what your belief system was. And then again, as we attach to those things, we have the emotions that go with it. Oh yeah, I saw these people, they were in charge, they were yelling and screaming, they would be raiding people. They, and I worked, I, I'll never forget, I worked with one company. All they did was berate the people. Nobody ever gave a compliment. Nobody ever said, you're doing a good job, no, never. And you know, eventually they, they closed and it just didn't work out. Because, and their turnover, the people kept leaving and new people coming in and they just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. You can only do it for so long. Eventually it doesn't work. Eventually the energy starts to dissolve as you just continue to push that negative energy out. So as we're moving forward, you want to be aware of how people are getting power and are they getting it from a pure space of self-love and healing or are they getting it from a place of intimidation? Are they getting it from a place of fear? or they want to dictate a situation or control a situation. So you have to be aware of that to say, okay, I understand that. Now they may, you see, this is the thing that's funny here in the third dimensional physical world. They may seem like they have power because they, they kind of do in this third dimension, right? You say, well, they're the boss or they're the, this is the mother of the family and she dictates or the father of the family and he determines everything. They seem to be powerful, but really deep down they're not. So your power for you, you just want to be aware. And so I want to be aware of what's going on around me, how I feel, and moving myself into a position of being peaceful and being in a state of self-love. So your power will come from within when you are in that state. Now, here's the deal. When you're in that state of self-love, these negative people, these people who are trying to force you into it, eventually those two energies, especially now as we flip this, I'm telling you right now, look out April because watch what's going to happen. But you're going to notice that these energies cannot coexist. So it's almost like it's going to be a natural separation because these two energies, now it doesn't mean there won't be some conflict. There could be some conflict or some issues involved. But at the end of the day, these energies are just going to kind of drift away. And as they drift, you just let it happen. It's a natural organic process. So as you elevate your power, others will drop away from you. And 
you will be attracting different people into your life. You have to remember, if you've been weak your whole life, if you've been allowed people to manipulate you your whole life, or you've been one of those people who's trying to be nice and I, this was me, I want to help everybody and be nice at my own expense. If that was you, then as you are stepping across the line into this higher state of energy, you're going to see a transformation. We're on Transformation Talk Radio. You're going to see a transformation of the people around you. And you're going to notice that there will be a shift of people coming in and going out. And a lot of people that are in your life and have been in your life for a long period of time, they will know it won't work for you anymore. It doesn't make them bad people. It doesn't make them good people. It's just different. And you're moving into a state of self-love and stepping across into your power. So we want to thank you so much for joining us here on Transformation Talk Radio. This is a shot of Joe. I'm Joe Nunziata. I look forward to seeing you on our next episode. Join Joe the second and fourth Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern for 30 minutes of high energy, no nonsense, and powerful tools to make powerful changes. To find out more about Joe or download past podcasts, visit joenuns.com. That's J-O-E-N-U-N-Z.com. 